Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Thursday afternoon as we take a look at this winter storm that's slowly developing in the Plain States and in the Rockies and parts of the Rockies anyway. We've got various winter storm warnings up in the pink areas in the, um, I guess that's a light purple. I'm not very good with colors. Um, that uh, is, those are winter weather advisories. We have blizzard warnings up for parts of uh, northeastern South Dakota and southwestern Minnesota. Uh, and a winter storm warning extends northeastward from there. We also actually have now a blizzard watch that was put up a little further north as this uh, weather system uh, gets going. And we'll switch off to the radar, and you can see uh, this is the latest radar. This is the radar loop from uh, noontime today. And it's, it's tough sometimes when you look at radars out in the Rockies because the mountainous terrain blocks some, uh, some echoes. So you don't really see everything necessarily. But uh, there is some, a patch of uh, a fairly large patch of heavy snow going on over central Wyoming. You've got some heavy snow bands in western Colorado where they have winter storm warnings up in some areas there. Um, there's probably going to be a lot less as you go north and northeast. But just please understand, I don't, since my forecast basis is the northeast, I really have not spent a lot of time figuring out how the West works. So I hope if I say something wrong, be a little forgiving. Uh, you do see uh, this has actually increased in the last uh, few hours, these, this precip band that's running across uh, from northwestern South Dakota. And then you have precip aloft that's now breaking out uh, into parts of central Minnesota. So it's all part of the process. And you'll see it here on the satellite loop as well, what's going on. And it's a really good illustration, by the way, of uh, what's happening um, across the country uh, with that space in between. Because you have, um, you have this dry area right up here, and that's in between uh, the two storm systems that are on the map right now. This one out in the Atlantic, and you have the one that's developing uh, back out here. Uh, in the plain. So if you were to look at this and if and, and, and if you want to imagine how the jet stream looks through all of this, you know, you have a trough here, a ridge here, and a trough here. So that's kind of how the upper air sets up. And we're seeing dry air, actually the outflow from this developing low in the ocean, the dry air outflow is uh, causing air to sink along the eastern seaboard. And uh, as a result, we've got uh, nice weather blue skies and sunshine and it's also a bit breezy here along coastal locations but in the meantime you can see the high the increasing higher cloud tops that are developing out in the west with the western storm um, and they're, they're, those are spreading northeastward this is the system that's going to usher in the cold air uh, into uh, the eastern states now let's i want to take you through the gfs and we're going to go through thanksgiving week because there's a couple of things going on first off uh, there's that first low uh, that runs up pretty far to the west up into the Lake Superior. Now, we were talking earlier in the week, this ocean low was going to be key because if this thing were strong or stronger than what it, what it actually turned out to be, this energy would wind up falling apart and you'd have some kind of low developing probably somewhere along the New Jersey coast or over New York City and Long Island, but it would allow for some room for perhaps a, a, a much more extensive interior snowfall. But because that's not happening, the low in the Atlantic is weaker. You're getting uh, the main system kind of holding its own. So uh, as a result, this really becomes uh, more of a cold front that's moving through. Behind the front, you know, you've got some moisture on the west side of the low, but behind the front, you're getting winds going in off the Great Lakes. So there will be uh, a pretty good uh, lake effect a machine going on over uh, Sunday into Monday and you can see it here and it just kind of diminishes over time and as we go out into the long range next week Tuesday looks good and Wednesday it looks okay but we've got low pressure that's going to be coming out of the central the uh, southern plains and heading uh, into northern Illinois now one of the things that I want to watch out for if let's look at the GFS literally on its track which takes the low uh, just to about Detroit and then from there, it kind of moves it straight east across New York, central New York State into coastal New England. One of the things that I want to be very careful about here, and I will widen this out just a little bit so you can get a, a, a better illustration of what I'm talking about, is the fact that we do have uh, blocking uh, that's going to be uh, increasing in intensity as they, it goes through next week. So I want to see how the model reacts to this because... 
there might be, and it does happen sometimes, you don't see it too often this time of year, uh, be, but when you have deep blocking in the uh, deeper part of the winter, you do tend to see this. But um, it could, if, if that's the case, there'll be lower pressure to the east that will tend to hold on longer, and this high to the north might be a little stronger. So this could force a weaker low to possibly track further south. Uh, if that's the case, that opens the door to the possibility of snow across the interior northeast uh, for Thanksgiving Day and a cold rain uh, for the coast. I'm actually excited about the prospect that we could wind up with precipitation at all. So if we, if this, play, I mean, one way or another, we're going to get some much needed rain or, you know, for interior areas. Now on this literal track, because it's so far to the north, you don't really get a lot of snow. There's some lead snow that uh, develops up in northern uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and through much of interior Maine, and then you get some back edge snows when the low goes by. But you know, beyond that, um, it, it wouldn't look like a big deal. If, if the block is, it's, is it's, as strong as models are indicating, then we might have a different uh, scenario here. And then there's another low that follows for thanks that weekend and Thanksgiving, and because of the block, you can see what happens. Now, this is what I was thinking maybe with the first low. You see how that primary low moves into southern Michigan and then just kind of uh, slowly falls apart and then redevelops off the mid-Atlantic coast there. You know, that's sometimes how you can get snowfall. You, that's how you get snowfalls in this area of the northeast. And obviously, it, the atmosphere would have to be a little colder. But when you're in this blocking pattern that we're in, um, we have to open the door to the possibilities. Now, out in the west, you know, with that second system, there's going to be a little bit of precipitation, but it really doesn't get going until it's well east of the Rockies. And then you have another system that comes into the Pacific West later in the period. And this one, you know, again, you get into some precip, but it doesn't show all that much. Uh, we're going to have to get some energy to come a little further south, um, which models are indicating later on. But, you know, who knows when we get into that um, that period after day seven or eight when you know, things wind up becoming uh, a little bit more uh, confusing. I just want to show you real quick, I want to show you this hemispheric view because I found it very interesting. I'll be looking at the top down of what's happening in the long range. Now, let's not put too much stock in the, in the, in the literal look so much, but just watch the flow because this is what blocking does. You have higher than normal pressures all across Canada and up into the poles. So the jet stream is actually way to the south. You can see it here very, very well. I'll, uh, I'll draw it in for you. Um, <clears throat> but right here, I mean, the jet is way south of where it normally would be. And you've got this upper air storm off the Pacific coast. You've got this one off the Atlantic coast. But you can see up in the poles, it's really mostly high pressure that's up here. And that's um, what happens when you have blocking. The cold air winds up displacing the jet way to the south. And I'm just going to say that is, if, if this blocking holds uh, for any length of time, at some point something's going to give, and, and you're going to wind up with um, an early uh, snowstorm somewhere uh, in, the, uh, in, the United, in the eastern part of the United States. I, I don't want to be more, <coughs> obviously I can't be more specific than that, excuse me, but um, if it's going to happen, this is the kind of pattern that, uh, you want to see. And with respect to that, just want to show you the North Atlantic oscillation is off the wall negative. It's it's crashing to zero. It goes negative this weekend and it goes off the wall negative all of next week. And then going into Thanksgiving weekend where it starts to rise, this is where you have to watch out. Sometimes when you have these, these rapid rises um, in the um, indexes, um, can be conducive to a storm developing someplace because what the rapid rise is telling you is that the atmosphere is undergoing big change. Um, you see it here in the fall down, uh, so something's going to happen someplace of, of consequence, but also when it's rising up like this, if, if that winds up verifying, um, you could also wind up with uh, energy being expended in the atmosphere somewhere. So uh, I want to leave it because of, with this because a few of you have, have asked about this. We have uh, this disturbed weather in the southwest Caribbean that continues. There looks like there's a mid-level circulation here. The Hurricane Center rates this a 70% chance of becoming a tropical cyclone in the next five days. But uh, I just want to tell you that there really is no mechanism for it to move up. This time of year when they form down here, they either move northeast and out 
or they wind up just staying down in the Southwest Caribbean and moving westward. So either way, I don't think this, if this were to develop into something, and models are less bullish about that now, um, I don't see it as a, um, a problem uh, for the U.S., but we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. And by the way, for those of you who really love Siberian snow cover, and I can tell you that even though we're past that relevant period of the month of October, uh, the Siberian snow cover continues to grow at an almost parabolic rate, and it's it's still the highest of, of any of the 13-year uh, sample that we have here. And we did have a crash uh, in snow cover across North America over the last couple of weeks, and you can see it here. We now have the lowest snow cover across North America than any time in the last 13 years, but it did start to turn up again. So I'm thinking with what we're seeing with the blocking pattern uh, that's developing that we're going to see this uh, start to rise uh, in the coming weeks going into December and beyond. So have a great day. Don't forget to check out the websites, uh, meteorologistjoechoffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, nycweathernow.com, and ssstormchasers.com. I will put uh, cards on the, on the video uh, a little bit later on with the link so you can directly, uh, if you like, you can directly go to it. Also, for those of you that are in the New York, New Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania, and um, Long Island area and Southern New England, uh, if you uh, would like, download my weather app and you can subscribe to my forecast. It's just 99 cents a month. You get an ad-free experience. You get uh, specific forecasts for those particular zones. And um, I would appreciate it because it, it helps offset costs of me doing all this. So thank you so much. And by the way, I really appreciate greatly um, the in the um, responses, the posts, I've been trying to stay engaged and on top of all of that, and I will continue to do so. I'm having a wonderful time here with these Facebook videos, and as we go through the winter months and we start to get into things that are relevant to the East especially, I'm going to try and do a few different things with them. So, um, and I appreciate that I have a really good audience out there uh, watching these videos. Thank you so much.